Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Fresh Off the Set. I'm Alora Murray, and I am so excited today because we have Tanisha Brown here with us, event producer, life coach, speaker, editor in chief, and founder of Impact Magazine. Tanisha, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so, so much for having me. I'm truly excited to be here. I am excited that you are here. When you came in, I had so much energy. I'm glad I didn't scare you off and you're still (laughs) sitting here next to me doing this podcast interview. So Tanisha, you have done, you are just incredible. Let's start off with what Impact Magazine is for Mm. those out there who don't know. Yes, Impact Magazine is a place where black men and women come to be empowered, encouraged, and educated on other black men and women who are making an impact in their communities and industries. I re- when you came in, I said those three words, empower, encourage, and educate. Those yes. are such powerful words, and yes. your magazine truly is yes. so it very is, powerful. It's the foundation for the past 15 years of the magazine, and that's what keeps us in front in in people's faces because we all don't want to be inundated with negativity all the time so people come to the magazine to be inspired and understand and they understand that representation matters you know yeah and you are true truly so inspiring i did i google stalked you i stalked your website (laughs) i stalked your linkedin i love it thank you (laughs) how did the magazine begin hmm So uh, 15 years ago, it was crazy. I was in church and um, always dibbled and dabbled into graphic, you know, design. And um, I was asked to do the programs and then the announcements. And then it hit me one day that the church didn't have a newsletter. And so I just created it, and I was so deep with it. It was called the Oracle. <laughs> love it, love it. <laughs> and so then, you know, was putting out the news, and people love the graphic designs and the content. And so then, you know, I left the the church, um, and while leaving, it hit me like you have this newsletter, everyone loves it. You send it out. What are you gonna do with that? And I said, you know what. I don't know. (laughs) But then I started to see um, every week this guy named Darren Morris in my hometown of Trent, New Jersey. He had a newspaper that went out every week called Cream Magazine. And it went out and it showed um, our neighborhood people who graduated, whose birthday, who had children. And it was just about the neighborhood. And I saw how every Friday... People would run to, like, the beauty salons and everywhere because they wanted to see themselves in a positive light. I love that. And so I was just like, wow, look at that. That's great news, you know. And I saw that, and I said, but I don't want to do a newspaper, you know. And then I was just going through at home, and I saw Essence magazine. And I was like, a magazine, that would be great. That was just... Light bulb. Yes, that was just like Oprah say an aha moment. Uh-huh. And it's like, oh my God, you could do a magazine. I don't have the faintest clue how to start it, but, you know... <laughs> but you went for you it. You can do it. And so I, what I did was, and this is why I tell everyone when they're entering anything, I don't care what it is, is do your research. I researched, at the time, Essence and Ebony, and there still are the two biggest black magazines out. I loved Ebony. John Johnson put that out. It was about community, Mm -hmm. and it was about um, showing who was doing what in the community, but on a national scale. And then Essence, they particularly, um, their demographic is black women. So instead of me just trying to mimic the magazines, I mimic the the founders and oh, the editor. Okay. So John Johnson, you know, he, I, and it's so amazing to me because he moved as a child to Chicago from the South. And from there, he just built Ebony Magazine. 
And then I identified with Susan L. Taylor because she was a single mom. She went to night school. She worked while she was building Essence up. So I've, I identified with both of them because I needed to learn how to be the single mom trying to build this business. And I learned so many things and to keep being positive when things don't work out my way, you know, and that's how it all started. That. That is an amazing story <laughs> for an amazing magazine. And you actually, now it is printed across the nation. Yes. You moved out west to yes. kind of circulate it out here. Talk to me about that. Oh, wow, right? 2018, uh, well, 2017, I began dinners called the Women and Men of Impact Honorary Dinners. And we will host at, like, the Ritz, Four Seasons. Oh, very fancy. Yeah, very <laughs> fancy. If you know my brand, it's just, like, everything's fancy over the top, right? Love it. <laughs> Love it. And so 2017, I honored um, Karen Civil, And I invited 50 women to Atlanta um, to honor them, I had Deisha Dyer from the Obama administration, oh, wow. like reality stars, like a whole group of black women together from different arenas Amazing. of life. And I saw how it was. And I was like, and I saw from that uh, people doing business together, people found their publicists. It was just like a really good thing. And I said, I'm on to something. So then I thought about it and I said, you know what? I have, I'm, I'm really good friends with Vanessa Simmons. I'm like, let me go out west and see what I can do here, honor some people, and that will be my breakthrough for the magazine. Oh, I love it. Oh, my gosh. We had to, um, Tori Hart, Aisha Hines from Fox 911 mm, with Angela Bassett. It. She um, was our guest of honor. Of course, Vanessa was honored. And I went there, and we did it at the Ritz, um, at the Staples Center. And it was just amazing. And then the amount of people from L.A. that gravitated to the magazine was amazing. And so I said, well, why am I keeping this out east, you know, and you know, the internet, you're everywhere. So I said, let me, let me see about how I can go out west and get these things. So I started to, you know, build it out here. But my son was graduating from school. So Mm -hmm. I took some time in 2019 to get him situated, get him into college. And then 2020, here we are. And I was like, I, I knew someone here that was, they just kept saying, you need to come here. The magazine is needed here. There's nothing like it. No black magazines here. You need to come and be that uh, representing voice here. And so after, you know, well, during the po- um, pandemic, I was just like, I was seeing the, how the community here, the black community came together working with each other, making sure each business strive and thrive. And I just was like, okay, this would be a good place to live right now while I'm back and forth to Uh Atlanta and here while I'm building out Vegas, L.A., Portland, like all of those cities. I'll I'll, I'll just stay in Utah. And we're we're so happy that you're here. We Uh, love having you here. uh, And the fact that you are spreading that mission to empower and encourage and educate all over the country. Yes. All over. So not only do you have the magazine, but you are a book author. Talk to me about your book, No Designation. (sighs) Wow. So Like, doing events, I would find, because there are always, like, I've always had, like, celebrities or really big influencers involved with Mm -hmm. the um, events. And um, I'll never forget 2013, I did an event in my hometown with um, Ming Lee. She's, like, this really big influencer, Mm -hmm. entrepreneur. And the young, like, one of the young ladies came to me. She had, like, a group of people. And I was like... Was it not a good show? <laughs> like, like, wait a minute. You're like, I thought I did a really good job. I thought job. it was okay. People stood up. They clapped. Da, da, da. <laughs> and so the young lady came, and she was like, do you have a minute? And I was like, sure. And she said, I really, really love Ming Lee. Like, I loved her. She said, but I really, really wish you would have told your story. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think people were, like, interested mm-hmm. because my mind was, let me get it out and show other people and she was like no um I am more driven off of you 
You come from Trenton. You come from a place that most people can't get out of. So I really want to hear about your story. She's, she's already there. People around the country, we know her story, but we don't know yours. Okay. And so that resonated with me. Um, like, wow, people want to know your story. And yeah. as I kept going and, like, started to tell, because I'm very private, and I started mm-hmm. to tell, like, little things about my life. And people are like, really? And you survived that? So that's where it went. Um, and I was like, okay, it's time for me to tell my story. And then uh, last year, I have an event called the Who's Who Networking Mixer. And I um, honored uh, Pollyanna Reed, who is the senior contributor for Forbes. So and um, she does something that I think is really, really great. After anything she does, any events or meetings, and she meets someone, she's like, Let's put 15 minutes on the calendar so we could see how we could work with each other. Oh, nice. Yes. And so we did that. And we're talking. I started asking her about her books because she has a couple of bestsellers. And she, I was like, mm, I'm thinking of writing my story. And she was like, what? You don't have your story out yet? And I was <laughs> like, no. And she said, you need to go ahead. And I said, you know what? I have three chapters written already. She says, send me those three chapters, and I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to write your foreword. So Pollyanna wrote the foreword. Oh, yes, it was so amazing. It was like you were meant to write this book. Yes, because it talks about um, me going through, like, different um, adversities and still, like, you know, learning through life and building a business, being a single mom, and still having those issues from childhood, mm-hmm. teenage, and even adult things on your back. And we are making decisions from those traumas. Yeah. And it's like it wasn't until my son came to me to say that he forgave me, right. you know, for the sacrifices we went through in building this business and mm-hmm. raising a son and moving everywhere yeah. <laughs> and it was time you know and and so I needed to tell people this story about healing you yeah. know whether it's from childhood because in my childhood um, I thought my stepfather was my biological father okay and then when I turned 20 my mom while watching Ricky Lake uh, my mom told me um, during a commercial, the, the story Ricky Lake was talking about was the children learning who their parents are okay. when they were like five to ten years old. Oh, okay. And when, it, you know, so when they the commercial came on, my mom looked at me and was like, how would you feel if somebody told you that Lawrence, you know, yeah. wasn't your father? And I was like, what? Like, I said, man, I'll be happy. He didn't do anything <laughs> for us. <laughs> Just <laughs> keeping it real. Kids always keep it real. I was like, he didn't do anything for us. He didn't, he was fun. He was yeah. a dad that came around, but yeah. financially he didn't help my mom. Yeah. You know, so I was like, what? I wouldn't care. And so then the commercial came back on. She looked at me and she said, well, William James is your father. He's from Newark, New Jersey. And I was just like. Am I being punked? I was looking <laughs> for the cameraman. I'm like, what? And she's like, do you want to meet him? And I met him that day. And that day is when rage came into my life. Mm-hmm. And I was filled with rage with my mom because I was like, why would you allow this man who didn't take care of us? And we laugh and joke about it because he's been in our lives, yeah. all our lives. But I was like, why would you do that? But I came to the understanding when my son said that he forgave me was that my mom came from an era that all your children, she was married, all your children had to have the same last name. Mm -hmm. You had to have the same father. You would be. So it was just like all of those things paid, uh, paved the way. And then she said something to me because when I became enraged with her, I left New Jersey. I started to move all around the country. And then. She said something to me. I went back home to visit, and she said, I did what I thought was best. There you go. And so when my son came to me to tell me that he forgave me out of the blue, 
I was home making food, and he came in, and he was like, Mom, you know what? I forgive you. Oh, wow. And I was like, forgive me for what? I'm cooking dinner. You don't want to eat? Like, <laughs> it just came to my, uh-huh. and he was like, no. Do you know moving all around and me starting fresh and me starting new at a new school a lot, that did a lot to me. And he said, you know, just started to share the things. And as he was speaking, my mom's voice said, I did what I thought was best, came right oh, into my there brain. You go. Because I did what I thought was best. But the thing that healed me was I did what I thought was best for me. It was not necessarily for my son. Oh, I grew okay. up where, um, you know, if my mom was on hard times, we lived with people. My son didn't know that. He didn't okay. know that life. He only knew my mom had a great job. I worked at Merrill Lynch in an executive's yep. office there and had go. a great salary. Mm-hmm. But then when this dream, I saw that it could work, I said, let me sacrifice. We could go move here. We can go move there. We could live here with these people. And that. He didn't know that life. I knew that life. Yeah. And my mom, just like, you know, we discussed before I put the book out, that she did what she thought was best for her, not necessarily for me as a child. Okay. And she stands firm that even to this day, look, I did I did it right, mm-hmm. you know, but I don't agree with her. Yeah. And I've learned to accept the things I can't change. So I, I can't change the past. I can't change how she feels. I could just change my perspective on how I deal with it. Thank God that I was able to meet my father and we moved on, and I, he's, he was a great man, you know, and I'm able to see my son grow, and we were able to communicate and talk his things out early. Mm-hmm. So now he's able to be an adult without all of that trauma on his back because trauma is the thing that keeps us held down, and we make our decisions from that. Like I made the decision to go across country and stay with people when my son was not used yeah. to that life. Yeah. You know? Right. That is a very powerful message mm-hmm. and so inspiring that you were brave enough to write all this down <laughs> and be like, this is my story. It sounds like I said earlier, you were truly meant mm-hmm. to write this book because as humans, I think we crave connection. Yes. We crave connection. We crave community. And you writing this can help people read this and be like, I connect with you. Mm-hmm. I see this. This resonates with me. This right. means so much that you have written this because I, too, have been through something similar. Okay. So you writing this is so brave, Aww, so amazing. You. you have a book tour coming up. Talk yes, to us about yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. So the book tour... If you have to get to know me. I'm all <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about themed events and everything. So I want it because the book is heavy. It's yeah. heavy, but it's light, you mm-hmm. know, because I joke. I tell about my stories of meeting celebrities, working with like Tabitha mm-hmm. Brown and 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 oh, I love her. Right. So She's amazing. Very much. I have so many great stories of that. But the the things about the trauma and going through all of those things and the learning um, curve of building this business, I say, you know what? I want the the tour to be different. I don't want it to be just me sitting in a couch and somebody's interviewing me. I want us to have a good time. I want us to um, relax. And nice. so I created what we call Pino and Pajamas. Oh, I knew it was going to have a <laughs> fancy element. I knew there was going to be a fancy element. <laughs> yes, so we're going to get dressed in our great pajamas and come out, celebrate, and we're going to discuss the book, but we're going to have, like, I've partnered with some black spa owners, spa and wellness owners around the country. So fun. Yeah, and so we're going to get there, get some facials and all of that good stuff, and then, you know, just discuss the book after that. I love that. I feel like it's easy to discuss things when you're relaxed, relaxed in your PJs. Yes. So before we wrap up, talk to me about the upcoming um, Impact Black Women experience. Wow. So that is great. Impact Black Women um, started when I read in the Salt Lake Tribune about um, women's equality here in Utah being like low. And so as reading um, the the article, they didn't state anything about women of color, especially black women. 
And so I said, you know, how would you feel growing up in a space where you weren't even considered? Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know what? I've been considering women for 15 years. Why not start something here that's specific for this region? And that's where Impact Black Women came, um, came from. And I had Tabitha Brown and David Banner, who's a rapper, philanthropist. He came through because we have a great relationship. And I wanted to show that dynamic of a black man coming to support black women because that's what I know. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it started. And then it was a great experience, three days at the Grand America. And we're, everyone's like, when are you going to do it again? <laughs> So I'm coming again in August Yay. for the summer experience, and we're going to be talking about relationships, um, the power in your image with fashion. So we're going to have a nice little fashion showcase. So just, you know, leveling up from the last one. Okay, Tanisha, you are an event planner <laughs> extraordinaire. <laughs> we have loved talking to you today, and we always end our podcast with what we call the Fresh Five. I, okay. just I ask you five <laughs> really easy questions. Um, I mean, I think they're easy, so we'll, <laughs> see. we'll see. You could be like, why are you asking me that? <laughs> so, number one, what is your favorite movie or TV show? Oh, wow. My favorite movie is Imitation of Life. Okay. Um, and my favorite... TV show? Oh, my God. I don't watch a lot of TV, but what is my favorite? Oh, right. Uh, the first thing came into my mind is Snowfall. There you go. All right. <laughs> See, they are easy questions. Okay, two. Who was your celebrity crush? Oh, Lord. You're trying to give me a <laughs> chance. <laughs> I had to ask it. I had to. I know you've met oh, so many celebrities. Gosh. I got to know. My favorite crush is my... My friend David Banner, because he is an amazing, amazing man um, who's intricate. He's very private, and he is serious about loving on black people. So mm -hmm. I would say him. Perfect. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> if you were stranded on an island, what is one book or album you have to have? Hmm, my album, Mary J. Blige, My Life. There you go. And a book also? Yeah. Um, Sister Soldier. Um, oh my God, what is her um, coldest winter ever? Okay. See, you're answering these really <laughs> easy. I know you were nervous, but we're good. So, and I, this next question, I feel like you can do everything. So, Aww. I'm. What is one hobby you've always wanted to try? A hobby that I always wanted to try. <sighs> a hobby I always wanted to try. I know, because you do everything. No! <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. I'm like, uh, if I like it, I'm going to try. So See, it's like, I'm I feel like, like that's an answer. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's just, if something comes into my mind, I believe I can do it, I'm going to try it. See, <laughs> we all need to be a little more like Tanisha. No. I feel like if we were all a bit like you, we would all be better off. Oh. <laughs> and then the last thing, what is your favorite quote? Mm. Oh, my favorite qu quote is, to thine own self be true. Beautiful. That's I love it. that. I think that is a perfect way to wrap up our interview, Tanisha. It has Aww. been so amazing. Thank you. Sitting down, talking with you about your story and all the good that you are doing. We've I appreciate you. We've loved, loved having you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Mm -hmm. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe, and we will see you next time. Aww. <laughs>